Now we're going to start doing the repair work on the back seam of the fish. This is the next necessary step in the finishing process. Normally I like to do this just using one method, but I'm going to show you two different methods. The method I normally use is actually just to cut a piece of muslin and glue it onto the back seam. But I'm going to show you another way of doing it using epoxy sculpt. To start out, we need to set down some kind of a uh, foundation for our epoxy to go on. If we simply put our epoxy sculpt on these scales and this foam, you would have the chance of lifting or buckling these scales from the moisture that's in the epoxy and you'd be picking up little foam chunks as we're trying to do our sculpting work with our epoxy. So we need to put down some five minute epoxy first. This is a little bit different from like a modeling epoxy. This is just a brush on epoxy. They call it five minute or quick cure five because it cures in literally five minutes. This particular kind is from uh, System 3. The Taxmi suppliers do sell this. You can also buy this at hardware stores or home improvement stores. This particular brand that I'm buying here, I actually get from McKenzie. It works really good. I've been using this brand for years here. Five minute epoxy is mixed up 50-50 or equal parts of each kind. So we're going to start with part A. If it's kind of cold where you're working, it can be a little bit slower to set up and a little bit harder to work with. Also, it's important when you're using quick cure five minute epoxy that you're working in a well ventilated area. If you have an exhaust fan, that would be great. If you don't have that in a garage with the door open, or anywhere you have good airflow, even outside would be a good idea. You don't need a ton of this. We're just putting down a light coat. So that's part A. Now we're going to go ahead and put part B on our piece of cardboard. That's what we're mixing. You would not want to mix this on your workbench. It would stick to it and actually ruin your workbench. You can see I actually have on white latex gloves when I'm using this for safety reasons and because it sticks to your fingers, you don't, uh, it'd be very hard to actually wash that off. You have to wear it off. You want to make sure you don't have unmixed parts of this anywhere. You can see I have A, B here. I don't have it all over my workbench or all over my piece of cardboard. I'm just taking my tongue depressor stir stick and mix it together. You want to make sure it's just thoroughly mixed. You don't want to spend too much time mixing this because your working time is going to go down. Remember, the warmer it is out, the less work time you have. Take my stick and just kind of press it in. Make sure I have anything that isn't mixed up pushed into my uh, other area that isn't mixed up. So now we have it thoroughly mixed. Again, this was just 50-50 mix. I'm going to go ahead and apply this from right here down to here. Get some on the brush. In place and just start spreading it out. And I'm getting it up onto these scales as well as all over the foam. You don't have to come way down here with it, but it should come to about here. Just working that down to the tail. What this is going to do is it's going to lock those scales all in place so they will not move. Also, because epoxy sculpt is not flexible, if there's any movement from this fish skin over time during weather changes when the fish is actually completed, the epoxy would crack if we just put it right onto the fish skin. But because we have our foundation with five minute epoxy, that's going to stop that skin from moving and allow the epoxy to not crack and to be much more durable. I'm just spreading out with my finger. I do have a little bit of extra here, so I'm going to go ahead and just put that over this area as well. It's not necessary to do this if you're going to be gluing muslin on. And you'll see that when we get to that part, I actually just glued muslin on with Elmer's glue. But because I have a little bit of extra, I'm just going to show you how I would do it. If I was going to epoxy the entire seam, sometimes you'll pull up a few scales, so you'll just want to get rid of those. 
and we'll just spread it out with our finger. Now we'll let this cure out for about 10 minutes and then we can come back and do our actual epoxy work. Now our five minute epoxy has dried, we can start doing our repair work with our epoxy sculpt. In this particular case, we're gonna be using AV's epoxy sculpt. This is modeling compound. This is a little bit different than the brush on epoxy we use here. This is actually epoxy. This is mixed the same way, 50-50, parts A and parts B. What I'd like to do is open up both containers. You can see I have gloves on. It's very important that you wear gloves when you're handling any kind of chemical, but especially epoxies and apoxies. You can actually break out in a rash and lose your sensitivity over time with these. Also, uh, working with this in a ventilated area is a good idea. If your room is a little bit warmer when you're working on this, this will work a little bit easier. You can actually warm this up by putting this in a warmer area before you actually start working with it. It'll make your job easier. I'm gonna start with part B. Take a little bit out of the container. Make it into a ball. We're gonna do the same with the A side. Again, you want these to match. They should be equal parts. It doesn't have to be 100% equal. It'll still cure out, but it's a good idea that it's equal. This is a chemical reaction between these two parts as we mix, the, mix them together. This is different than clay, where you could just take clay out and put it on here, but clay would not be a good choice for this at all. Epoxy is much stronger. So it looks like we have uh, equal parts taken out. So we'll go ahead and close up our containers. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and mix this together. So I like to start by rolling it and spinning it. And then I'm actually just going to be kneading it together. You want to make sure this is thoroughly mixed. You cannot over mix this. If it's not thoroughly mixed, it will not cure out correctly. You have a lot more working time with epoxy versus our brush on five minute epoxy. You probably could work with this for the next hour. It's at its best for the first 10 minutes. It's still very workable after 20 minutes. After about a half an hour, it starts getting harder to work with. You could come back and do minor adjustments on it even a couple hours later. If you're working in a room that's very cold, the uh, dry time or cure time will be much longer. The warmer the room, the shorter the cure time. Also, the warmer the room you're working in, the easier it is to work with. And we're just rolling and kneading it together. You want to kind of check it and make sure you don't see any lines or streaks in it. That would be uh, an indication you did not mix it enough. So we have it completely mixed up. I'm going to take it and put it on a piece of cardboard. I wouldn't want to put it directly on my bench because it's actually going to stick to the bench. If you do that over time, your bench is going to be coated with a mixed and unmixed up epoxy. Because we actually mixed up the two A and B parts with these gloves, I'm going to change gloves and put a fresh pair on now, and then we're going to apply it to the bass. Okay, now we're actually going to be applying our epoxy to the back seam. It's a good idea to have warm or hot water to help you when you're applying your epoxy. You can take this right out of the faucet hot, or it even works to heat up some water in a microwave. The hotter the water, the easy, easier the epoxy works. That's actually a good trick, something to keep in mind when you're doing other epoxy work in your shop. We're also going to need a maxi scaler, and this is something you can buy from McKenzie Taxidermy Supply. And it's a, basically a roller with scale impressions on it. And this is what we're going to use to recreate the scale detail back here. 
You'll also need a paper towel to dab off any moisture or water that could potentially run onto the show side. You always want to avoid getting water onto the dried scale area of the fish. If you do that, it can buckle the scales up. If that does happen, we'll show you some tricks later on how you can push those back down. But just keep in mind you don't want water running all over your fish. We're going to start up by taking a small amount of our epoxy and putting it onto the back seam. I don't take the whole lump of epoxy and put it on here in one big lump and then try to smooth it out. You'll see that as we do the other epoxy work on this bass, you want to put a reasonable amount of epoxy down, work that around, and then put more on. So I'm going to dip it right in my warm water. This actually helps to loosen it up a little bit and makes it much easier to work with. Take my left hand and hold onto the fish to stabilize it. And I'm just going to start pressing it into place. You get a little bit more water on my finger as I'm moving here. It makes it much easier to work with. But so what I'm doing with my epoxy here is I'm filling in the low area, which is the area between the two scales and then or sides seams of the fish, and then just spreading it into those scales a little bit. Again, that's another epoxying trick. You don't want to put a big gob of epoxy and then try to smooth it way down. You'll, be, you'll have epoxy coming down to here if you do it that way. Just filling in that area in between and then carefully smoothing it out into our scaled area. If you recall, when we put our five minute epoxy on, we brushed it on, we brushed it over those scales. And that's allowing me to get this moisture on those scales without them buckling. Set it back down a second, I'm just gonna wipe that moisture away. You can see a little area here I needed to fill in a little bit more. You always want smooth transitions when you're doing this. This is also really good practice to do this back here first before you actually do your other epoxy repairs on the bass. You can get used to using this medium. Epoxy sculpt is much different than clay to work with. So if you've done some work with clay in the past, this is a whole nother animal. Okay, I'm just dabbing that water away. Put a little bit more back here. I'm not going to repair this area here at this time. I'm going to do that at the end when we do our other epoxy repair work. A little bit more water on my fingers. You see I, a lot of times I'll go back onto the paper towel. You don't want to get too much water on here, it'll just run all over the place. Okay, let's dab off any excess water. I got a little extra epoxy, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it a little bit further up just to show you how I do it. You can, I'm actually gonna be going right over a lot of this with my muslin, and that's fine to do it that way for training purposes. It doesn't hurt anything. And you don't want to have any low spots when you're doing this either, or big dips. It's not as much of an issue on the back side of your fish because people aren't really going to be looking back here. But it's a good habit to get into to try to hold that quality level across everything you're working on in your shop. So if you're doing a back side of a fish, if you can make it look as nice as the show side, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a sign of professionalism.
and as we move further up, the scales on the uh, gut or belly of the fish are actually more prone to raising up as they get moisture on them. So the five minute epoxy that we put on earlier, brushed on, is what's helping to hold that down. We want to make sure we control all of our water runs as we're moving here so we don't have water going down onto that area and buckling those scales on us. This is really as far up as we would need to go if we were going to be doing our seam this way. This will all be repaired in the second epoxying step. What we'll do after our fin work is completed and dried. Now I'm just going along and making sure that I, uh, I have good coverage everywhere and I don't have any dips and I don't have any areas where there's missing epoxy. Okay, now I'm going to take my paper towel. I'm going to dab off all the moisture. There might be a few areas here and there where a few scales still buckle up even after we had our five minute epoxy on them. If that does happen, we can easily fix that later. Now there's two ways to actually use our scaler. One way is to let this epoxy cure out for about 15 to 20 minutes and then come back. But because we actually dabbed off all the moisture, I'm going to do it now. First step is to get the scaler wet. So I dip it in my warm water. Now we're going to use our scaler and we're going to run from head to tail. And you have to remember now, we just dipped it in the water so it's wet. That's important, otherwise the epoxy will stick to this plastic scale roller. Go back and get a little bit more water on it. I'm pressing in fairly hard here. I want to make sure I get a really good impression of scales back here. You can actually roll it back towards the head slightly too and it'll make the same impression of scales. You can just take your finger then and smooth out anywhere if it uh, had pressed it in incorrectly. And it looks like we've got it good. So I'm going to take my scaler and put it in the water and just clean it off really good. You can also use a um, softer bristled wire brush to help clean this tool. It's very important that these maxi scalers stay very clean. If you have any epoxy stuck on here after the fact, it will distort your next application on your next fish. and You won't have a good clean scales. It's also a good idea to just clean off the handle a little bit. Always keep your tools in your work area clean. Now I'm going to take my paper towel, and this is slightly moist from cleaning off the tool, and that's perfect. And I'm just going to dab this. This is going to give it a little bit more of a roughed up look. And that is now complete. You will want to let that dry for at least three to four hours before we would actually do any more finishing work on this bass. But as you can see, by doing it in this order, we're able to do all the fins and the seam at the same time. That way you can keep the process moving a little faster. I originally said I was going to be doing our bass in two different parts for the back seam repairs, but I had a little extra epoxy and I wanted to show you how I actually did the entire seam just with epoxy. So I grabbed another large mouth bass we already had mounted out of the shop to show you how to do the repair of the seam with muslin. This is actually a little bit faster method than the epoxy and it may actually last longer than the epoxy. The advantage of the epoxy is you can scale it. It's up to you which one you would prefer to use on most of the fish that go out of our shop. We actually just use muslin. You can buy this muslin at uh, craft stores, uh, quilting stores. I actually buy this online right on Amazon but, uh, or eBay. That's probably the easiest way to get this. This is just 
uh, a standard muslin that they would use for doing clothing work. Nothing fancy. The cheapest kind of muslin you can buy is fine. It doesn't have to be very thick either. So what I like to actually do is I like to lay it right over the seam. Press it down. You can actually see the outline of what we have to cover this way. And I take a little Sharpie marker. I'm just going to draw the outline of what I need to cut out. We want to go over the seam a little bit. But we don't want to go too far over the seam. If you go too far over the seam, your muslin is going to be coming down too far closer to the show side. You might actually see it on the finished mount. It's not necessary. We just want to cover the foam and we want to cover the seam to give it a finished look. So there's the profile what we need to cut out. This is a trick to cutting muslin so you don't have ragged edges. It takes a little bit of practice. A good sharp scissors is important when you're working with this. we have it cut out, we do a test run, make sure it is completely covering up everything. And in this case it is. We don't need to do any trimming on it. So now we're going to put our glue down. And we're going to be using just Elmer's glue, the same stuff you see at any store you used to use when you were a kid in school. That works great for this. We don't have to apply any five minute epoxy to the scales in this particular case. They're not going to buckle up. That's why this is actually a little bit faster method than the epoxy method. Again, we want good adequate coverage all over the foam and onto the scales. We don't want to go too far down towards the show side of the fish for this. Just enough. Okay, the glue's all been applied. So now we'll apply our muslin. Just gently press it into place at this point. And then we'll put another coat of our Elmer's glue right over the top of it. This helps to uh, hold the muslin down and it gives it a more finished off look and gives it a lot more durability if you put the coat over the top. Now we'll let this dry for about two hours. You can put a fan on it if you need to uh, work on it a little faster. So there you actually have the two different methods of finishing off the back seam on a bass or on any skin mount fish. Uh, both of these methods work great. It all depends on your preference. As I stated before, if I had my preference, I would use the muslin just because it's a little bit faster.